Hey, I'm Samuel. Thank you for joining me today on Smashing Pillars TV. Uh, we are on KBNTV.TV uh, every, every uh, Tuesday, every Friday, and every Sunday. Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., Friday, 6 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. And uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. You can go to KBN's uh, Kena Broadcasting Network. You can go to their channel as well. All my, all my previous uh, episodes are there. There are um, what I would call some tools there that need to be in your belt. And so when you have time, scroll through the page and check it out. You can go to my website also, uh, smashingpillarsinternational.org. There's a lot of prophetic words. There's all types of teachings all the way back to, I think, maybe 2009, something like that. There's a lot there. So you can uh, do a word search for a specific topic. You'll pull up all the posts on my blog, and, and you'll be blessed, okay? And uh, I want to thank you for, again, for your support. Thank you for uh, the finances that you've sown. It is uh, making a difference in people's lives. In fact, you know, the ministry's mission is to help people stuck in life become unstuck. And that's exactly what's happening. And uh, Jesus is the one who's doing it. We're just a along for the ride with him. Amen. Okay. So let me open in prayer and then we'll get started. Because we're gonna, I'm going to pray for you today to let go of the past. The Lord was speaking to me last night that um, it's time to let go of the past. And actually, he's been saying that for a few weeks, but he really opened it up to me last night. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that a little bit and then we're going to pray, okay? We're going to set you free from the past once and for all. Well, Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to come before you again by the blood of Yeshua, by the blood of the Lamb, Lord God, to release our word, the word of our testimony, Lord, concerning you, concerning what you say. Lord, I thank you for my brother and my sister, my friends that are watching this video right now, Lord. God, I thank you that your anointing is flowing freely to break every yoke off of them, to remove every burden that you did not place upon them, every burden from the past, Lord God, that you're removing those even now as I'm praying, Father. I thank you that your angels are moving on their behalf and on behalf of this prayer that is going forth in Yeshua's mighty name. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you would just anoint us to hear what the Spirit is saying. And Lord, I thank you that it'll produce fruit in the life of my brother, my sister, and myself in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, so, you know, letting go of the past is, it's so important, you know, if, if, you know, if you believe the Word of God and the power that's available to you in the name of Jesus, then, then nothing should be impossible for you. You should be able to do these things. Um, you know, we go through a lot of things. Okay? A lot of things are done to us. Um, we may be traumatized by things, even in our, in our childhood. But there's nothing that the name of Jesus can't set you free from. There's nothing that the name of Jesus um, can heal you from or deliver you from. Amen? And you have to, you have to really get that in you. You know, the, the enemy is just releasing witchcraft, all kinds of occult powers and assignments that are being released in the earth today, specifically targeting believers, the, the sons and the daughters of God. You need to know you're a target. You need to know every day that you're, when you get up in the morning, you woke up in a war. You woke up in a battle. I'm not saying that every day is going to be fight, 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 but you need to understand that the enemy is always looking for an opportune time, an opportunity to come and strike. And you need to always be sober. You need to always be alert because the minute the enemy is able to come and, 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 and take you captive, he will. It just takes, takes one moment of distraction. One moment where you begin to entertain something you should not be entertaining because the very thing that captures your attention, it captures you. That's the way the enemy works. So, you know... <clears throat> No devil, no demon, no warlock. Nothing can hold you back in Jesus' name. Not even the devil. The, what really holds us back is ourselves, our unbelief or our, our ignorance to what God has done for us. Okay? So today, we're going to pray uh, powerful prayers to deliver you from your past. It's so important that as Christians, we have to let go of the past. It could be from your childhood, it could be from yesterday that somebody did something to you that you're still thinking about it today. You, we need to learn how to let go. We need to practice letting go daily. You've got to let it go. 
it should be a lifestyle actually that we practice. You know, if you don't let go of the past, you will never progress into the fullness of what God has for you. And that's just, that's just true. It's like you're walking around dragging big sandbags behind you. Um, you'll always be tired. You'll never get anywhere. You'll always be struggling in life. And you don't want to be like that. You don't want to live that life. That's not the life God's called you to live. You know, the, the past is something that should be forgotten. Unfortunately, a lot of people let it define them. Okay? Are you letting your life, your past, define who you are today because of what's been done to you or what others, you know, said about you? Maybe what your parents used to say to you when you were little. Are you letting that define you today? If you're in Christ, the Bible says that that old man, that old person from the past who you used to be has passed away, that all things have become new, that you are a new creation. And that's the revelation you need to get today, that you don't have to be who your past says you are. Your past doesn't have to define you anymore. Man, I'm telling you, you need to get this because it's going to set you free today. The power that's in the name of Jesus and his anointing is going to set you free from your past. He is going to cut that cord once and for all. You know, you don't have to be defined by it, okay? You can let it go. Here's what your confession needs to be. It's no longer I who live, that person from the past. No longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. That's Galatians 2, uh, verse 20. Let me give you a few more scriptures about letting go of the past or what the Bible says about the past. Luke 9, uh, verse 62. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, is equipped, is ready, is able to flow and to operate in the kingdom of God. Not, not while you're looking back to your past. It doesn't matter what you've done. If you've repented, the blood of Jesus cleanses you and your conscience of all unrighteousness. You know why? So your own heart won't condemn you. God doesn't condemn you. 1 John 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to purify us from all, large caps, A-L-L, all unrighteousness. Matthew 6, 15, But if you do not forgive others their sins, right, whatever's been done to you in the past by others, if you don't forgive them of their sins, you can't receive forgiveness for yourself. You're still going to be bound. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. You know, when, when people hurt us in the past, it's common to say something like, you know, I'm, you're, you know, revenge, retaliation, backlash. You promise these things against that person. And basically what you do is you bring it upon yourself. Whatever you sow is what you reap. And remember this, you always receive back more than what you sow. You always reap more than what you sow. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. That's who the new creation, the new you should be. Proverbs 4.25, let our eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. You're not going that way anyway. Don't look back anymore. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, 8 and 9. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast in, uh, more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest upon me. So Paul got that revelation. You know, the reason why God won't take that thorn from you, whatever it is, is because he wants you to overcome it. And, and he's already overcome the world. He said that to the disciples. He said, I've overcome the world. He also said, the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Well, guess what? You're in Christ. The ruler of this world has nothing in you. You just need that revelation. We, that's why you have to continually be washing your mind with the word of God. Isaiah 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid for the Lord God is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. You know, in Genesis 41 verse 51, 
Joseph names his firstborn son Manasseh, saying, For God said, He hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. So basically, he named his son, and what his son meant was, For God made me forget all my past, everything that was done to me by my family, my father's house, whatever it is that's been done to you, God will cause you to forget it. There's, um, <clears throat> there are some things, though, from our past that are so traumatic or so demonic that it requires God himself to get involved. You can fast, you can pray, but you seem to be stuck in this cycle, uh, you know, that keeps you connected to your past. You need God to come in. You, you need to invite him to come in and to break that yoke. And what you do is, you know, Matthew 7, verse 7 through 11, Jesus says, ask and, and, you know, it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open to you. Basically, pray, 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 pray. Give him no rest. Pray, pray, pray. Because what you're doing is you're not begging God. What you're doing is you're creating an atmosphere for God to come and move as you're praying. The other thing, too, is you're charging yourself with the anointing of God. And it says in Isaiah, maybe verse chapter 10, um, that the anointing, that the yoke of the enemy will be broken off of your neck because your neck has become so fat. That means you've become so rich and so saturated with the anointing that that yoke breaks and the burdens of the enemy are removed from you. That's why you should pray, 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 pray. No longer think of it as begging God. Don't beg God. Speak his word, pray to him, talk to him. Listen to what he says in the rest of this uh, passage. Or what man among you who, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? Well, if you then being evil can give good things to your kids or good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? Amen. God's not withholding anything from you. If you desire deliverance, you truly, sincerely de desire deliverance from your past, you can receive it today in Jesus' mighty name. You can receive it today in Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Jesus. If you open your heart and you trust in him, he'll set you free. He will set you free. He'll not only set you free, but he'll also make you whole again. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He'll make it like it never even happened. You know, I've shared my testimony before. You can go to my YouTube channel. Right there at the top of the channel is my testimony. And you can hear about all the things that I experienced growing up as a little boy. And God made it like it never even happened. It does not affect me. I have a new name. That old guy is gone. He's dead. Every once in a while, I talk about him to be an example to others who will believe in Jesus Christ. Just remember that God's grace is sufficient for you. His power is released through your weakness. Okay. God has you covered. You know, again, his grace, his grace is his nature and his character infused in and through you. In other words, God comes and he strengthens you in your inner man by the power and might of his spirit. And he causes you to overcome every work of the devil in your life that is set against you. Man, I'm telling you, that's awesome news. That is awesome. You'll defeat your adversary. You will. You get, a, you get a hold of this, you'll defeat your adversary. You got to remember, you have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Willpower is not going to get it. It's not going to get it. I'm going to just, I choose, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget the past. I'm not going to let it affect me anymore. Willpower is not going to do it. If it's, you've got to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit, by God. You need to remember also, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, mights, dominions. You're dealing with wickedness in high places. You have to take up the full armor of God, and you have to stand. After you've done everything, you need to stand on the word of God. You need to believe what Timothy, you know, Paul told Timothy, you waged a good warfare by the, by the prophecies previously spoken over you. You have to understand also in, in, in 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 13, it says, No temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So what is the way of escape that God provides for you? It's his grace. Remember, his grace is sufficient. His grace 
is your way of escape. He wants you to overcome every temptation the enemy brings towards you. I'll give you a passage that will back it up. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. In other words, don't be moved. Hold on to that confession. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, right? His anointing is perfected through our weaknesses. But was in all points tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to what? The throne of grace. There's your way of escape. The throne of grace. Why? So that you can obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. There it is right there. There's no devil. There's no demon. There's no past. There's no hurtful word. There's no tra uh, trauma traumatic experience from your past that can keep you after today from moving forward in what God has for you. Nothing. As your praises go up, God's blessing comes down. You got to remember that. You got to get in the habit of worshiping him and praising him. You need to do it verbally. Okay? You've got to do it verbally. And just know this. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. God will use your past to take you on to something greater. He'll set you free from it, but he'll use it for your good and take you something to something greater. Therefore, don't lose heart. This is what it says in Corinthians. Don't lose heart. Even though your outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For your light affliction, which is for but a moment, is working for you a far exceeding and e far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While you do not look at the things which are, are seen, don't look at your current circumstances, but look to the things that are which, which are not seen. The things which are seen are only temporary. This shall pass, says the Lord. But the things which are not seen, they are eternal. So, you know, Paul also said in Philippians 3, he said, you know, forgetting those things which are behind. Think about that. Forgetting those things which are behind. Right? I reach forward. I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I'm pressing toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, if it was good enough for Paul, it's good enough for us. If it's good enough for Yeshua, for Jesus, it's good enough for us. He's the one who led by example, and then he gave us his very... Actually, he said in John chapter 17, he said, Father, the glory you've given to me that I had when I was with you before anything ever was, that glory, I've given it to them. I've crowned them with that glory. And the love that you have loved me with, you love them with the same love. I'm telling you, you're packing and you may not even know it. <laughs> Everything you need is within you, okay? And so let's just go ahead and begin to, to pray. Let's just go ahead and, and worship the Father. Father, we thank, thank you, God. I thank you that you're so good. My, my brother, my sister, make sure that you are separated, that you're not distracted for the next 10 minutes, okay, as we pray. And, and I know that the power of God is going to set you free from your past. I would highly encourage you that you share this with others that need to be set free from their past, okay? All right, so Father, you're wonderful. You're a holy God. Lord, we worship you and we praise you right now. Father, I pray that you open the heavens over my brother, over my sister. Open the heavens over myself, over Kingdom Broadcasting Network, where I'm standing right now. And let your, your power fall in this place. Let your power fill the homes, Lord, of those who are watching this episode right now, Lord. God, I thank you that you're a holy God, that you're a righteous God. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you that you're a mighty God, that you're wonderful, that you're our counselor, our helper. You're our provider, Lord. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us, Lord God. Lord, today is another day that we have that we can press into you, Father. Lord, I thank you that we can seek you today and we can receive from you today, Abba, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that your grace is sufficient and your power is perfected through our weaknesses in our lives concerning those things that concern us. Lord, receive all the praise and all the glory. Receive all the honor. You alone are worthy. You are the Alpha, the Omega. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end. Lord, you are the only true God. There is no other God besides you. Lord, who can stop you from doing what you've already purposed in your heart to do for my brother and my sister today? Lord, I thank you that the angels are being released right now from your throne to minister to them, to bind the enemy, to set them free, 
from the chains of the enemy, Lord God, from the chains of the past, Lord God. Only you can deliver, Jesus. Only you can deliver. Only you can deliver in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. There's power in that name and in the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we're not done. We've just created an atmosphere for the Lord. Get in the habit of doing that. When you wake up in the morning, just begin praising God. Just begin to walk through the house. Praise the Lord. Do you know that that's why the Bible says clap your hands? It says clap your hands, shout, make noise. Do you know when you clap your hands, it, you know, sound is light. And in the spirit realm, every time you're clapping your hands, it's, there's an explosion of light. And so anytime you're being oppressed or depressed by the enemy and you just don't have any strength, you're fatigued, you're, you can't get out of bed. You know what you do? You walk around, you just start saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord and clap your hands as hard as you can shout and just walk back and forth. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know what? You'll see all of a sudden the atmosphere starts to clear up. All of a sudden that weight comes off of you. All of a sudden the enemy knows you figured it out. You figured it out that God has given you authority in both realms. You don't have to deal with that stuff anymore, brother, sister. If you believe and agree with me in prayer, you'll receive your deliverance today from your past. Where two or more agree concerning anything, Jesus said the Father would give it to us. Amen? He will give it to us. So, Lord, I just, I just lift up my, my dear friends right now, Lord. I lift them up to you. I thank you for their precious souls. I thank you for their lives, Abba. Lord, I ask you to release grace to them to release their past right now, Lord, that you release all the hurt and the pain from the past in their lives. Lord, I pray right now that your anointing comes and it breaks off every false burden, every false weight, every false obligation, every false responsibility that their past has put upon them by the anointing and by the word of God. We break that off of them right now in Jesus mighty name. Those things that have kept you from moving forward will no longer keep you bound, will no longer keep you tethered to the past. Lord, I thank you that my friend re receives the gift of repentance right now. Lord, it's a gift. All you have to do is receive this gift of repentance that the Father is releasing to you today. And you know what repentance is? It is the, 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 um, the grace of God to change the way you think. Because God will deliver you from stuff, but you still have to change the way you think. That's where the transformation comes, by the word of God, okay? By the word of God. Lord, let my, my friends right now receive total deliverance from their past today. Release them into a greater realm of your glory and your presence, a greater ability to flow in your spirit, Abba. Lord, let your power manifest to them now to release signs and wonders and miracles on their behalf to set them free once and for, for all from the past, Lord God. Lord, I renounce any vows and oaths and promises that were not of you, Lord, that, that, that my brother or my sister may have made that has kept them tethered to the past. I break those cords and I set you free right now. I break the soul ties that have kept you tethered to the past. I set you free from those soul ties now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, if deliverance is needed in any area of their life, Lord, I pray right now that deliverance comes. Deliverance comes from fear worry, anxiety, deliverance from depression, deliverance from addiction, deliverance from bondage, deliverance from um, infirmities. God, I pray that you deliver them right now. Totally set them free, Father. Totally set them free. Break the power of the enemy off of their life once and for all, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're bringing my friends into higher realms of your glory even now as I pray. God, I thank you for doing this for my dear friends, Lord God. Thank you for moving mightily on their behalf, Lord God. And God, I thank you, Lord, that according to Job, it says in Job 22, verse 28, that you shall declare a thing and so shall it be done. I decree and declare you're set free from your past, brother. I decree and declare you're set free from all those things from the past, all the way to day one. For those of you who your parent, your mother tried to abort you, I set you free from that past because you were, you were known by God before he formed you in the womb. You belong to him. You belong to him and him alone. He chose you before you were born. That's what the word says. Read it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He ordained you also. He set you apart for him. You have a future and you have to let go of the past. You know, Job, um, Job 14. I'm just kind of off the top of my head here. Job 14 verse 14. Actually, no, let me read it to you. 
You've got to see this. Job 14, and then we're going to close with this. This is Job speaking. He's lost everything in his life, okay? Verse 7 through 9, and then verse 14 through 16 or 17. For there's hope for a tree. If it's cut down, that it'll sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. And though its root may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud, and it will bring forth branches like a plant. Verse 14, if a man dies, shall he live again? Basically, he's saying, I only have one life. I'm not going to live again. I only have one life. So in this life, all the days of my hard service, I will wait until my change comes. Job knew God was not going to leave him like that. Job knew that God was not going to leave him tethered to the past memories of losing all his family and everything that he had, even his own health, okay? Job knew God was not going to leave him like that. You need to know God's not going to leave you tethered to your past anymore. It's done. It's a done deal. You shall call and I will answer you. You shall desire the work of your hands. For now you number my steps, but you do not watch over my sin. My transgression is sealed up in a bag and you cover my iniquity. Hallelujah. That's how precious, that's how nurturing God is for you. He's your father. He's the creator of all things. He loves you. I decree and declare you've been set free from your past once and for all. Let it go. Practice letting go and move forward. You need to look forward because God has some things that he wants to bring you into, but you have to be looking in that direction that he wants you to go in in order to enter into what he has for you. It's a new season for you. A new day has dawned upon you, and you need to know it. You need to know it. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. Thank you for taking time for me to allowing me to pray for you, and I know that God has set you free today. Please share this video with others that you know are tethered to their past so that God will set them free as well. In Jesus' name, right? In Jesus' name, he's the one who does it. I'm Samuel. This is Smashing Pillars TV. Thanks for joining me today. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.